You're listening to Off to Market with Scott Farley and Hamish Chadwick. So I'm Hamish. And I'm Scott. And you're listening to number two podcast and the theme today is getting yourself organised. Uh, Scott, I think we'll start with you. I want to uh, get our listeners to get an understanding of how they start to get themselves organised. The previous podcast we were talking about uh, validating a project, seeing if a concept or an idea was worth following through. So let's just uh, assume that a concept uh, can go to the next stage of uh, development. So what do you typically do when you get to that point? Yeah, so I guess then the next, the next point is trying to capture what's needed and then cost it out, get a budget and a uh, brief together. Um, usually I combine the two of them, which uh, the proposal outlines exactly what we're trying to achieve and what that's going to cost, how much time it's going to take. Um, we're, we're sort of focused on objectives and outcomes. So um, we don't, I might just go back a little bit to our, our first um, first podcast because we didn't really go into some of the aspects of the business plan and patent strategy, which really is going to become quite important when you are, are mapping out what's involved in a project. So um, as far as a business plan goes, it's, it's R&D. It's a very loose document, but basically it's an outline or a direction that you might take. And with product development, there's a number of different ways you can go. Um, if you've got a really uh, heavy to tool up idea, so basically if it's gonna cost a hell of a lot to manufacture or tool up, you might be sort of forced into a licensing role where you develop the idea and you take that idea to a multinational and pitch it to them in the hope that they may um, pay, you know, take over the project, uh, take over the manufacturing, take over the um, IP arrangements, legal, legal um, work and all the rest of it and pay you a royalty. Um, so that's sort of licensing a- a- avenue. Um, and then there's a distribution avenue where you might manufacture the product and run it through an existing distribution network so that's a, a more controlled manner of getting your product to market. Or you might make yourself a company, um, become a manufacturer and a sales, have a sales pipeline where you do direct sales uh, through online avenues or through retail. So there's sort of, there's a number of different ways you can uh, approach commercialization of the product. And if you're going to put map out a brief, um, you really need to know which, which direction you're gonna take so that you can um, I guess formulate the the, the plan around that uh, that avenue. Um, for example, if you're going to license, you may not need to go down the level of um, getting costings um, and all the rest of it, which is the whole manufacturing and engineering side of things. You might just get to a prototype stage and go and pitch that, do some demonstration videos and all the rest of it. Um, you know, so you, when, you, when you go to do the proposal, you need to know what avenue people are going to take so that you can so is that something you you have to determine before you start manufacturing is that uh what happens if you get is there a situation where someone might get halfway through say uh the the cad drawing stage or uh they're just about to uh, commence manufacturing and they think oh you know i can see how much money is going to be involved long term should I then start investigate licensing? Are you saying that you need to decide that before you even get started? Look, it's nice to decide it early um, because if you've, if you've decided to do manufacturing and you come back to licensing, it's no worries at all. But if you're just only going to do licensing and you go and spend all the manufacturing money, you know, you're probably just throwing that money away. You're, re- you're much better off using that money to, to put into marketing videos, a pitch video, and going and seeing these people or paying someone to go and see these people for you. Right. So it's it's important to get it right. It's not it's not fixed in stone. And you can, as you say, you can always modify everything. Everything adapts over time. I mean, situations change all the time, and there's always sort of a fallback in most projects. Whereas if someone's situation changes, all of a sudden they just lob onto a million dollars and they decide they want to, <laughs> want to go and start manufacturing something they can always do that but it's nice um if you if you plan the project around an avenue because you will do things differently if you're going to go and do a pitch to a licensing you might make the product look even more fancy than it probably will be if you just went to manufacturing because you'd have things in it that you'd try and you'd weed out if you were going to go and launch into manufacturing yourself as an individual mm-hmm. you'd really simplify everything back you'd make it bare bones you'd launch it you would start making money and you might add features to it 
Whereas if you're going to go and license it to a multinational who wants to see all the bells and whistles, then you focus all, all your efforts into making this thing look, look just top notch so that they can just take it straight on board, run it through their sales pipeline and all their big manufacturing processes and everything and get it to market. So certainly it can change, but generally you would like to have that plan in place before you go and put the proposal together. The proposal is pretty much a guideline and we try and follow it. And, yeah. and if every time you vary it from it, it costs. So we always have a very strict linear progression through the stages. We're very critical at each stage and we try and make sure that if you get to a stage that's just not working, you either can the project so you don't spend any more money unwisely or you uh, so go on make, a holiday. Make a change. You go on a holiday, <laughs> or you make a change that allows you to to follow on and and have a successful product at the end of it. It's the doubling back. I mean, re research and development is renowned for being expensive. Mm. And double the budget, double the time, all the rest of it. And it's always simply because people aren't critical enough at the stage gates. You do the first brief. You read it. Hey, this doesn't suit me. Change it. Mm. Don't keep plowing along with it. You know, make incremental changes as you go. And don't make any. Don't get to a end of a end of a stage and go shit. This whole stage was useless because we didn't account for this. Make sure you've criticised it, you've analysed it, and you, and you only move on if it's ready to go. Mm. Make some more changes. So yeah, that that's quite an important part of it, which we we needed to cover before we talk about the pre print proposal. Um, also, the patent strategy. Um, patent strategies. Patents are notoriously expensive. There's uh, basically a roller coaster you get on uh, if you lock into them. We have strategies where we really delay all of the patent um, process unless we really have reason to put it in place early. Um, there's two sides to patents. Okay, you've got your idea protected, but unless your idea is pretty well, well resolved, you're really not protecting anything of worth. So resolve the product first, put a patent strategy in place or put a patent in, straight in place, or do your work outside of patents with non-disclosure agreements and things, and then stop that roller coaster of cash if you get on that roller coaster and you haven't prepared for it and you don't have a good budget for it it can be the end of a project because mm -hmm. it's so expensive um, so you can end up having if you don't get the right strategy you can end up having all the patent costs coming in just when your manufacturing costs are coming in right it's deadly to a project so you want to try and stage these things out so that it all works financially and commercially for the project okay So I guess now you've um, determined what your business plan is and what your patent strategy is, you can go ahead and map out um, what's involved in the project and obviously estimate timelines and, uh, and costs involved in it. Put them to a brief and submit it to the client. It's basically the first level of um, the evolution of your product. I submit what I think you wanted the outcomes of your product and you read that document and if you agree with me, we go ahead. If you disagree with me, that's our first stage, great. We adapt that proposal and we make it suit yourself or the outcomes of the project and we move forward. So it's a totally adaptive process and each stage needs to be evaluated, adapted to suit. Um, I guess from Hamish's perspective, he would uh, have, a, have a different way of going about his proposals because he's sort of coming at it from another angle. Um, I guess you'd mainly, I guess, be, be almost finding a gap in the market and, and, uh, and leading from there, whereas I'm Oh, well, I, well, I, to something. oh I, I think in the first instance, though, if we go back to what you mentioned previously about choosing at the outset a strategy, so whether it's licensing, distribution, or retail sales, is depending, and this is the thing, it's, I, I'm not advocating for myself to be involved right from the beginning, but if you want to go down, say, a licensing uh, path, uh, the, you, you will have to start thinking about your, your brand, your marketing, your name, your position for the product because you will need to provide some tangibility to investors. Uh, if you present to investors, they're going to ask you all sorts of questions. There's no point just going to them with a CAD drawing uh, and a potential to um, patent the product. You'll really do yourself a lot of favour if uh, you'll do yourself favours if you have if you can provide tangibility because at that point you are actually selling. You're you're not selling to your target market, but you're certainly at that point your target market might be like Scott said a multinational. It could be a um, investment fund. Who knows? It could just be a, an angel investor or a venture capitalist. You've got to go and your mum and dad or <laughs> mum and dad. There you go. Uh, but uh, so they'll want to see tangibility oh sorry they're not they're gonna they're gonna expect some tangibility because they want to see how it's gonna look what's it gonna look like on the shelf what what are you gonna call it 
uh, what's your uh, marketing strategy? What's your brand strategy? Where does it fit in the market? How do you want it to fit in the market? So at that point, uh, I would say I would need to be involved or someone like me needs to be involved at that licensing stage because you'll have to get things ready. Otherwise, you'll be at the last minute getting on a plane to go and present and you'll be wondering what the hell do we call it? Uh, and at that point, you're gonna look a bit disorganized. So it's better to get all your ducks in a row at the beginning uh, to make sure that your sales process in front of those individuals or those uh, boards or whatever, whoever you're presenting to, it's all there and you look confident. Uh, if you're looking at a distribution or a retail sales strategy, I don't have to come in or someone like me doesn't have to come in uh, until the prototyping is finished, until you're ready to put it in a box, you're ready to go and present to people that are gonna put it on their shelves. Uh, you can wait a bit, so you can, you'll still have to budget uh, for branding and marketing work, but you won't need to worry about it until you actually start going to market because at that point, uh, like Scott will, uh, I'm sure will agree, you'll have NDAs in place. You can talk about your product with particular people. You're not having to let the cat out of the bag. Uh, so there's no chance of, you don't have to do the marketing. You don't have to worry about having names out there and worrying about what sort of domain names and all that sort of thing, whether any of that's available. You can worry about that later on. But I'd certainly push to say that if you're looking at a licensing uh, model that you really need to start looking at brand a bit sooner hmm. and i just like to you know i guess sum sum up there with uh, talking about you know getting a plan in order uh the biggest benefit from a developer's point of perspective is that you can actually map out the process so rather than just plotting along at an hourly rate and having uh, making stuff up as you go along if you have a plan in place you can estimate the budget and uh, and actually have a budget to work towards and an outcome uh, which I find is a very good way of containing R&D costs. Mm -hmm. and I suppose getting back to the theme of this podcast is getting yourself organised. I'd just like to take a more philosophical perspective for you, and that is so you need to make sure that you have a, a good support base. The, the critical thing at this point in the project is so there are going to be a lot of people around you that potentially will uh, dissuade you from doing it and there'll be a lot of people that want to persuade you and I think the people that you engage uh, that you're going to pay uh, you've got to be very critical in terms of uh, what their objective is I mean obviously when you engage people like Scott and myself I mean we make a living out of this but we've all but we also advocate as we've said before for reality more so than just getting work in I mean if we see an idea that's not going to work we will say so uh, and if we can see you going down uh, a track which is not going to uh, produce any profit for you potentially then we will say so so it's important that you get a balance of, of both worlds and I think also too you've got to make sure you have significant uh, well not significant that's not the right word a good set of uh, a strategy in place for downtime you know away from the project because a lot of the creative thinking that will be required of you as the inventor uh, will be enhanced when you're not constantly focusing on what's in front of you. You need to let your subconscious do the work. I know that sounds a bit fanciful, but I think a lot of good creative thinking comes from focusing intensely on a, an idea and a concept and then being able to walk away and then come back to it the next day and sit down and think critically about what, what it is you're trying to do. There'll be a lot of experts around you uh, that will be telling you all sorts of different things. It can get a little bit intense in, in that sense, all I'd suggest is always listen, but always trust your instinct. Don't sit there and think that you have to do something because someone has told you to do it. Uh, and never be afraid to argue constructively and say no. I, I think the, the worst thing I've seen is I've worked with some good people and they've been uh, taken down a particular path and it's really not what they wanted to do and it's completely changed what they've wanted to do initially. So you've got to stick to your guns. So always listen. Like I said before, you've, you've got to always be learning, always be uh, questioning what people are saying to you. I mean, you know your product better than anyone else from, a, from an, ide an ideas perspective. Uh, and the other thing to think about too is, and try not to do, is to pigeonhole the people that you engage. I mean, we often, when you're involved in a project like this, you've got people that you've, you've put in place to help you. So Scott is an industrial designer. That's his tagline. That's, his, that's what he does. I'm a, you could call a designer, I suppose. I'm a consultant. I help people with their brands and their messaging. However, we've both got a lot of experience and we've seen what works. Scott's seen a lot of what works in marketing and I've seen a lot of what works and doesn't work in terms of industrial design. I'm not an expert in it, but we've all got our things to, we've all got our experience to draw on. So try not to pigeonhole people, listen to everyone, and you'll, you'll get a lot more out of it if you, if you think of it in, in those terms. Even, even your accountant, I mean, they will have seen, come across so many businesses over their uh, time at work 
uh, that they will be able to add their five cents worth and you should listen to that. You don't have to agree with them all the time, but at least listen to them and just realize that they've got experiences that maybe perhaps uh, that you don't. So that's what I'd like to uh, just impress uh, upon you is the fact that there are a lot of people around you that will, will wanna help you uh, sometimes, like we said before, it may seem like they're discouraging you, but that's only because they care, especially if they're family, but you've also just got to be careful and just follow your own instincts. You've been listening to Off to Market with Scott Farley and Hamish Chadwick.